Hi, this is Rebecca Holman from Low Content Book Mastery. And I normally haven't been making videos on this channel for some time, mostly because I'm on Facebook and I, and I have a membership group where I teach students there and I'm busy building my own business. But this significant change to what's happened with our low content books and ISBNs warranted me to jump on and make a video that I felt was important to be on YouTube so that people could get some good information. Um, I feel that right at this moment in time, really not much has changed. And I think that's the most critical point for you to take away from this. I don't want people to freak out because really nothing has changed. I've been making low content books since about 2016 and I've been making books on the Amazon platform for over 10 years. And at this point in time, it's important to understand that one, Amazon has defined what low content books are, which is good, but it also means that a, an era has ended to some extent for low content books. But really that era ended two years ago. Up until two years ago, low content books were available for expanded distribution. And because they could be in expanded distribution, meaning they could be sold off of Amazon, they could be sold in walmart.com, Barnes and Nobles, A Books, and other quality bookstores, and also they could be ordered in libraries as well. So that meant that our books had to have ISBNs. Now we could talk about whether they're stationary books or whatever, notebooks is one thing, but we also had planners and guest books and other things that are considered legitimate books that did need ISBNs to be sold in those other bookstores. So two years ago, unfortunately, there were some people in the low content book community who felt that using automators and uploading thousands of books to Amazon, basically flooding the platform with low quality books, uploading thousands of books a week, what happened was is Ingram Spark, who is behind expanded distribution on Amazon, shut the doors to low content books. So as of two years ago, two years ago, <laughs> um, I don't have the exact date, so I'm being approximate, so don't come heckling me and saying, oh, it's not two years ago, it's 15 months or whatever approximately two years ago, when we couldn't be in expanded distribution anymore, really our books, low content books, didn't need to have ISBNs anymore at that point in time. They became a Amazon only marketplace product and legitimately only needed to have an ASIN, an Amazon identification number. So at that point in time, Amazon could have made that change. I think they wanted to see what happened. I think they felt that low content books would be a fad and that maybe it would go away, but it hasn't. And so Amazon has made the adjustment, which they should have made two years ago. All right, ISBNs cost Amazon money, even if it only cost them a few pennies, it still cost them money. But in reality, it was something that was unnecessary because our books are not available to be sold anywhere except on the Amazon platform. Now that Amazon platform is massive and huge. You're in, all, you're in over 10 countries for heaven's sakes. So everything that has been going on for the last two years is going to continue to be exactly the way that it was except that you have to tick an extra box. And that's legitimately the only thing that's super changing in our world of low content books. There is one other thing that's a little bit important, but we can overcome that fairly simply. So let me just go and, and talk a little bit more about what's happening here. Uh, maybe you've already seen it in some of the groups and folks have talked about it, but Amazon has now defined what low content books are on their website. Now that's what's important to understand. They have said examples include notebooks, planners, journals, and other similar works, meaning log books and guest books, books that have repetitive content on each page. That's lines 
or anything that's exactly the same, you push a button and repeat those pages, or it's something that somebody is filling out in the book, meaning it can't be a Kindle book. One of the most important things I think of this right here is also that they are excluding activity and puzzle books and coloring books. So they're not including activity books and puzzle books or coloring books as low content books, and that's actually legitimate because activity and puzzle books and coloring books never were part of the low content book realm. They just sort of got glommed in there because people who were making low content books were also talking about how easy it was to make activity and puzzle books. And so they kind of got glommed in together into the same world, but they really are separate types of books because they do have content and they take actually quite some time to make because each page has to be unique. So that is an important and significant difference and I will leave the link to this page so you can read it for yourself what Amazon has talked about and they talk a little bit more about creating the low content book. When So here we ha have it has minimal or no content on the interior pages these pages are generally repetitive. They're designed to be filled in by the user. They include notebooks, planners, journals, and other similar works. Now this does not typically include activity, puzzle books, or coloring books, which generally do not feature repetitive content. So as you're making books, or if you've already segued into activity and puzzle books and coloring books, understand that you can't take an activity book and make multiple copies of the same activity book. All right, that's a no-no, that's duplicate content. Amazon will also frown on that as well. So when we're talking about the changes, this is what's important to take away. There really is zero difference on Amazon. As I've already iterated, because our books can't be sold anywhere off of Amazon, if you haven't worried about it for the last two years, don't freak about it now, all right? Now, one thing to understand about having an ISBN is that if you have a paperback book, you need one ISBN, and if you make a Kindle version of that book, you need another ISBN, and if you made a hardcover book of that hardback, cover of that book, then you need another ISBN. And if you need a spiral cover of that book, then that's another ISBN. All right, so every single type of book has a separate ISBN. One of the other changes that's coming down the pike is that we will not have the look inside for low content books. All right, it's only low content books. It doesn't apply to any other kind of books. And as you can imagine, if you have basically a notebook, it's just got lines inside. So if you do have a book that has significant interior alterations that are important beyond just being a notebook, then you need to learn how to use A plus content. And A plus content, I have a course on A plus content. If you don't know how to do it, there are some people who've made videos about A plus content on YouTube. I go into all the different details. I'll leave a link to my course if you want to do it. It's 25 bucks. It doesn't cost a lot of money, but it goes into everything. And if you already are a member of my mastermind, then you already have access to that as part of your monthly membership. So it's already there. But why is that important? One, because the look inside has never been available to mobile app users using the Amazon mobile app. Now, if you're using a browser on your mobile phone, yeah, sure, you can look inside, but literally nobody who has Amazon Prime uses a browser. They use their mobile app, all right? So with the mobile app, you can't, there is no look inside. So most of us have been using A plus content on our books since it became available last year for us. It's really not hard to make. And, and if you have Canva and everybody should have Canva because the free version is significant enough um, that you can make A plus content using the free version of Canva because you're just making little rectangles that have information about your book and interior images of your book. So it's really super easy to do.
But the usage of the mobile app by shoppers is almost 50% and growing to 60, 70, and at Christmas time it can be even higher. If you can think about your own usage, you're not walking around with a computer. And lots of younger millennials don't even have access to a computer. They only use their mobile phones anymore. And in some countries, it's much higher usage of just mobile only uh, and people who don't have laptops or computers. So I just want to say that this is more an adjustment than it is a major change. And that's really what I want to emphasize here. This is an adjustment. Again, our books haven't been able to be sold off of the Amazon marketplace for the last two years. And so honestly, two years ago, the need for an ISBN literally went away. Now, one thing I do want to make sure, and I've warned the people in my groups already about this, um, beware of fake ISBN sellers. Typically they're on eBay and they try and tell you, you know, that you can buy from them really cheap. Just know that many of those you cannot use because your information is part of the ISBN when you purchase it. Now I live in the United States, so Bowker is who I use in the United States. But if you just look in your country, um, you will find out who the official ISBN agency is for your country. Now, some people are going to tell you that you can get free ISBNs. Typically, books like journals and notebooks and things like that do not qualify for free ISBNs in Canada and other places like that. So look in your country, find out what your rules are about needing an ISBN or wanting to get an ISBN. But nine times out of 10, if you're making notebooks, you're not gonna get a free ISBN for that notebook. But I do want to emphasize, you do your due diligence to get the ISBN from your country of origin. That's another important thing for your ISBN when you're entering it, it has your information and your imprint on it. ISBNs are not cheap. So it's not something that you can just run out and go buy them. They cost $127 in the United States if you buy one at a time. And if you buy a, thou a block of a thousand, then you can bring the price way down, but it still costs hundreds of dollars, okay? So it's not something to just think that you're just gonna run off and you know, invest in ISBNs. If you really haven't invested in them up until now, you really don't have to think about that at all, unless you really, 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 really want to, and you have the money to do that. But definitely beware of buying them from any place else but legitimate services that are authorized sellers of ISBNs, okay? So I do want to end with that. Um, so I really appreciate you coming and checking it out. Um, again, I don't make very many videos uh, because I make videos for my members. I make them twice a month and I'm also on Facebook, but I'm building a business myself and I'm focused on building my book business. And so I really only want to come and talk to you when something really super important has happened because there's lots and lots of wonderful, wonderful channels here on YouTube that are, you know, I don't want to add to that noise. There's tons of noise out here already. So I hope you have a great day. Don't freak out. This is really not a big change. Um, and you can move forward with your business and take a big sigh of relief. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.